Welcome to the random module section of the course. The random module, which is available as part of the Python standard library, helps us with aspects of randomness, such as generating numbers, shuffling elements in a list, or selecting a random sample of elements out of a group. This is effective if you're building an application with randomness, like let's say a card game or a coin toss. Let's begin in this lesson with the random, randint, and ranrange functions. They're all available as top-level attributes in the random module. So let's go ahead and import that with our import keyword, import random. Same as any other module in the Python standard library. Let's begin by invoking the random function on the random module. So this is very similar to how the date time class works within the date time module in the sense that the module and something within it both share the exact same name. We have a random module which encloses a random function. So you just have to be careful here because you have to write random twice. Now if you want to simplify the syntax, remember that you can always do an alternate import like from random import random. Okay, so random is the name of the function within the random module. And what this does is generates a random floating point number between 0.0, .0 and 1.0. So it's always going to be between zero and one. I'm gonna execute this a few times and you can pay attention to the right hand side. You can see those values change. So if you just want a random number to, for example, represent a percentage, you can do it right here. And if you obviously want a larger floating point number, all you have to do is take this and multiply it by something. So if I want a random floating point number between zero and 100, it's as simple as taking this and multiplying it by 100. And now on the right hand side, we're gonna get 76, 88.6, 34.9, 76.8, 70.2, etc. So if you want to go for a higher range, you simply multiply it by a larger number and you'll get a larger potential result. The next function on our list is the randint function. It accepts two arguments which are going to represent a lower bound as well as an upper bound. So here I'm going to invoke random and the function is called randint and that is short for random integer. And we're telling Python to choose a random integer between the first argument and the second argument. So if I put one and five, I'm telling Python I want a number between one and five. Now keep in mind, both of these bounds are going to be inclusive, including the upper bound. So in this scenario, five is a possible result here. Our total possible options here are one, two, three, four, and five. It's not always the case that the upper bound is included, but it is with this function. So if I execute this a couple times, we're gonna get three, two, and there you can see we get five, and that's proving to you that we can get the upper bound as a result. Finally, the last function I want to show you is rand range. And this is very similar to rand int. It's going to give you a random number from a sequence. However, it also allows us to have step sequences. As you may recall, when we were talking about the range object in Python, a step sequence is a jump in between subsequent, subsequent values. And this is similar to how the range function generates a sequence of numbers for us. So for example, let's say I want to provide a range here. So I'm gonna do random, rand range, and the first two arguments here are gonna be the exact same as rand int. It's our starting bound and our ending bound, our beginning and our conclusion. So let's say I wanna start at zero and I want to go up to 50. The third argument here that range, rand range accepts, which rand int does not, is the step sequence or how much Python is gonna jump in between each of these values when it's generating the list of total possible values. So here what I'm gonna do is put 10. So the way we run this or the way that we think about this is we start at this lower bound and you can think about adding this number until you reach the middle number. So our possible values here are gonna be zero, 10, 20, 30, 40. And here, uh, contrary to what we just did in randint, in the rand range function, the upper bound is actually exclusive, which means 50 cannot be a possible option. So we're gonna go up to 50, but never actually equal it. So our only possible uh, results here when, when we take a random number for, from this range is going to be zero, 10, 20, 30, 40. So as I execute this a couple times, we're gonna get 10, 40, 30, zero, 30, zero. You can see as I press this multiple times, we're not gonna get 50 because that is exclusive. So again, with rand int, the upper bound is inclusive. With rand range, the upper bound is exclusive. It's a little bit different, a little bit confusing, and I personally don't like that inconsistency, but just know that if you need to generate a random uh, number in between a sequence that you don't uh, want to go through numerically, so uh, you don't wanna, for example, do zero through 50, you want to do all of the multiples of 10 in between zero and 50. In those kinds of scenarios, you would wanna use something like rand range. 
And that's all there is to cover in this lesson. We talked about three top level functions that are available as attributes on the built-in random module that's available as part of the Python standard library. The random function will give you a random floating point number between zero and one, which you can then uh, multiply by something larger to get a larger floating point number. The rand int function will give you a random integer in between a lower bound and an upper bound that you pass in as the first and second arguments. Both of those bounds are inclusive and are possible in the final number that you get back. And then we also talked about rand range, which is very similar to rand int, except it accepts a third argument to represent a step sequence between the first and the second argument. And in this function, rand range, the upper bound is exclusive. So be extra careful there. That's all there is to cover in this lesson. So I will see you in the next one.